my name is Lily and today I want to do a review on this compound bow here that I found on Amazon for about 120 euros. And when I saw this bow it caught my attention because it actually looks like the bow that Rambo was using in Rambo First Blood Part 2. So it was a pretty awesome movie and I'm a big fan of Rambo. And when I saw this bow on Amazon, I really had to get it and check it out. So this is not the original bow that Rambo used. It just looks similar. The original bow was called Hoyt Spectra. And yeah, this one looks very similar. So it has the same technique that was used in the 80s. It has the circular Omega wheels. And it's also fairly long because it was actually shot by hand and not with a trigger release so that's that was the main difference from the compound bows that are produced now and yeah this was the packaging here so here you can see that it says Hoteca compound bow by Anglo Arms but I believe that this bow here is not produced by them I think that this is an OEM product so OEM products are usually produced by one manufacturer, but many companies can just put their brands onto the bow. And when I did a little bit of research, I found the real manufacturer, which is called Man Kang, and the brand model of this bow is called CB55B. So this is the bow that we are dealing with, and now let's take a closer look. Now in the description it says that the riser is made from aluminum, and I think that's true because it's actually really heavy. Now the handle here is a little bit loose. So this is not perfectly fitted to the bow I have to say. The limbs are made from fiberglass which is a really cheap but good material for bows in general. And yeah the Omega wheels are looking good at the first look at least. I'm not sure what material this is. It looks like plastic. Let's take a look. I'm going to scratch the wheel and then we will see what we are dealing with. Ah, it's not plastic. It's aluminum. Great. Awesome. So I was a little bit concerned that the cams were out of plastic, but they are not. So I'm really happy that they are out of aluminum. Now, uh -huh. okay. The cable is very thin and the Omega wheel has very thin rims so I cannot really make my own cable because this is all too thin. And then here you have a little bit of a serving going on and this is a real bowstring and here you have some hooks at both sides actually, here and here. Yeah, all in all it looks really good, but it's also really strong. It says 55 pounds. Let's see if we can make it a little bit weaker for me. And here you get a little bit of a description which says that you have three different settings on every wheel. So right now it's set in the middle, which means that it has 55 pounds. I think I'm going to set it to 45 pounds and 26.5 inches of draw length. Okay, finally I got the cable in here into the slot and now let's do the other side. Okay, I got the different setting. And now I want to slowly release the bow press. Alrighty, so this is the pin side, which was something that they have used in the 80s. And there's nothing bad about it, but nowadays we have better pin sides. And I want to use a different one. And the arrow rest here is something that you would use on a recurve bow. And back in the 80s they also put this on a compound bow. But I already bought a better arrow rest and I want to use this one for sure. This one cost me like $6 on Amazon.
The screw here seems a little bit cheap, so I think it's rusting steel. So I want to use some Barney's door to make sure that it doesn't get so rusty. Okay, now let's see if I can draw the bow. So I have this uh, scale here. Now I want to find out how strong the bow really is. For the 7.5, for the 7. Okay guys, the bow has 47.5 pounds now and it's a really strong bow. So I thought that maybe I can get down the poundage by unscrewing the screw here. But unfortunately I do not know how long the screw is and I also do not know how many turns I can turn out the screw to still have safe limbs. So I think I'm going to take the bow press and then I can unscrew the limbs. And I want to see how long this screw is because it's also a matter of safety and here in this leaflet it says nothing about the screw length. So I have to find out myself. open up the screw here. Okay, now I want to untighten the screw here and this is the screw that holds the limbs in place. One, two, three, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So it's about sixteen, fifteen or sixteen. Whoop. Okay, this is how the bow looks underneath here. So now I want to put back in the screw. So now it's fully back in and we know we have 15 turns until the screw falls out. And now I want to screw it out again by about 4 turns at each side of the limbs. Which should make the bow quite a lot weaker. Maybe three or four times, let's see. One, two, maybe let's try it three times, okay? And now I want to do the same thing at the other side. One, two, three. Okay, so now the bow should be significantly weaker. Okay, slowly I want to take off the pressure. Okay, let's check it out now. It seems much lighter now. Let's check it out with the scale. 37, yeah! Okay, now it's easier for me to draw the bow. Okay guys, so finally I have a bow that I can actually draw. It really feels great on my shoulder. And a couple of years ago I had a shoulder injury, I got a surgery and it's good now. But I do not want to put too much pressure on my shoulder now. I can always make the bow stronger by tightening the screws again. And I really like that the bow is so adjustable. Okay, now it's time to shoot the bow and I've set up everything for a paper test. And for the arrows I have gold tip arrows with a spine of 500. They are pretty stiff and they should do well with the bow. Okay, first try and I try shooting this without any knocking points. So I have to guess the horizontal line here. <laughs> oh my god! Um, so we are quite horizontal, that's good. 
but the arrow is going to the left like this so the back of the arrow is to the left okay this was the first picture it was always bottom and to the left and that's not good so now i will try and install a d loop and then we will see how this changes the flight of the arrow okay so when i'm knocking in the arrow i try to get this horizontal line which is perpendicular to the bowstring so exactly here i want to set my d loop Okay, now I have set the steel loop here and now let's try shooting the bow again. And this time I'm using my trigger release. That's better. So now we have a different picture. Now the arrow is flying bottom down. But left and right is okay. Now take a look at this. So here you can see that the bottom of the arrow is down and the tip is up. And left and right is okay now. So unbelievable how much difference it makes if you release the bow by hand or with a trigger release. It's unbelievable. Okay, now I just have to move up my arrow rest and then the arrow should go away. Yes! Yeah! So I have moved up the arrow rest by about 5 millimeters. Okay, this is the shooting picture. This was the first arrow, second, third. And it's much better than before. At the second and third arrow, there was still a little bit of the same arrow. So maybe I'm going to move the arrow rest up a little bit more, one millimeter or so. That's it. Wow. Nice. Okay, this was the first shot and here I did something differently. I only had pressure up here and then the arrow flew like this. And then after the shot, I changed the pressure to here. So it was evenly distributed over the handle. And then I shot through the paper and it was a circle and it was perfect. So I think I now have found the perfect setup for the air rest and the D loop. And now it's time to set up a site. And here I have a pretty cheap site that I got off Amazon. It cost me about $10. And now I want to attach this one to the bow here. Alright, now I have a sight on a bow and next I want to install a peep and this just helps you to find um, your anchor a little bit easier or let's say not the anchor but you're going to stay at the same spot on the string or cable every time you're shooting. So this small thing here is not very expensive, it cost me like $6 but it helps with the accuracy so much. So, yeah, I will try to get this in without using a bow press. Let's see. Okay, so I have installed the peep and the peep also comes with a rubber and that's a pretty old fashioned way to keep the peep in the right direction, right? Because when you're looking through the bow, you should be able to look through like this, but when it turns in the wrong direction, you cannot look through anymore. So this rubber helps you to keep the peep in the right direction. And modern compound bow archers do not use this rubber anymore because usually uh, the string doesn't twist anymore if you have set this up right. So usually it should go with the D loop and also you can correct any twists here at the cams by just turning the cable. However, I have to say I really like this rubber and it doesn't disturb me if there's a rubber on this bow because I have so many gadgets already, it doesn't really matter anymore. So I think I'm going to attach this to the frame of the bow. But first I want to close this loop here.
Okay, so finally I have set up my peep and now I want to connect this to the frame somehow, to the riser. I believe that if I just attach it like this, it will be a little bit too short, so I have to add some extra string here. Okay, so this was my solution. I made a Prusik knot and the string here I have attached to the riser and now let's check out if this is long enough. So yeah, unfortunately I'm using one of the last pins now and that's not good because um, here at the short distance I should use the first pin. Okay, so now I'm shooting low. And that's because I cannot come any lower with my pins. That's a bad thing. So I cannot really use this side for the bow, unfortunately. So the old side it is. You can even move this up and down here, so that's not too bad. Now I have installed this very retro pin side and it only comes with two pins so that sucks a little bit. But um, yeah, I think that maybe the reason that I don't sell this bow with a side like this is that really there's too much of distance between the arrow rest and this here, this pin side. I think maybe they should have drilled the holes a little bit more down, maybe here, and then you could use a very cheap pin side like this one. And maybe if you have a more expensive arrow rest or side like this, you can go further down or further up, and then it would fit the bow. But these cheap parts. They do not go together at this bow here, right? So there's just too much distance. Yeah, that's very unfortunate because I really wanted to use this side here. But hey, now I know better. And now let's try out this old um, pin side. Let's see if it's accurate. I believe that this is not too bad actually because it's made from metal and you have a much wider range that you can set your pins here. So it's actually not too bad. It doesn't look as cool as this one though. Okay, so I think that the bow is very accurate. It shoots nicely and it's very precise. So all of my free arrows are in the middle of the target. After shooting the bow for a couple of times, I have to say I really like it and I think it's really worth it. And also, the wheels are not the most modern ones, of course. If you get egg-shaped cams, then you will have a better let off. But this bow has a let off of 70%, so it's not that bad, actually. And yeah, I like that you have three different draw lamps to choose from, which is not always granted with compound bows. And you can uh, adjust the power of the bow. Um, the thing that I don't like is that you have this old-fashioned cable and it would not be a problem per se, but the problem is if this breaks you will have uh, trouble searching for a new cable that fits the bow. And also if you attempt to make your own bowstring, it's going to be much thicker than the thin cable here. and. The Omega wheels have a very thin slot, so it's a very thin cable that just fits in there. So the question is, will a thicker bowstring fit into the Omega wheel? And I don't think so. Or maybe it does, I don't know. So that might be a problem in future when you have to change the cable. Now the next thing is the handle is really cheap. And it sometimes moves around when you're holding the bow. And that's a little bit of an awkward feeling when you're shooting some arrows and the handle is moving. I don't like it. And if I was the manufacturer, 
I would use some epoxy glue or some other glue which holds the handle in place better. Um, yeah, and last but not least, the side situation is a problem. If I was the manufacturer, I would drill the holes differently. So right now they are here and here. And I would just put them here and here, a little bit further down. Because then you could use a modern day compound bow side. And right now I can only use this range here. So from here to here. This is a problem. And I think if you just move down the holes, you could use all of the range here. So I might get one more pin here so that I have at least three different distances. Because with only two, it's a little bit hard to guess, right? And yeah, other than that, it's a really fine bow. It also comes with this thread here. So you could also install a wristband. And I gotta say, it's, it's a really good bow and it surprises me how good it shoots and how accurate it is. It also shoots center shot and the arrows are flying correctly. So yeah, it's not a bad bow at all. It has a couple of issues, but with most of them you can deal. I'm even thinking about drilling some new holes here and making like a new thread. So that's what I might make in future. Then I can use the modern pin side. Okay guys, so that's it for today. Next time I'm going to take this bow out to a range and then I want to see its accuracy at farther targets and distances. And until then, I want to thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.